Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the International Day Trading Academy. I am your host for the mini video series. In saying that, we'd like to start by welcoming you to IDTA. IDTA, passionately known as the International Day Trading Academy. So from the team, based on the Gold Coast here in Australia, welcome to IDTA. IDTA is our acronym for the International Day Trading Academy. At IDTA, we've got one dream and we've got one passion. And can I tell you, that is about living the dream, living our dream and helping you live your dream. Now, IDTA has been established by a group of passionate day traders who have one purpose, to live the dream. In saying that, our dream is very simple. It's to work when we want, it's to play when we want, it's to have no limit to the amount of income that we can earn. And what we want to do, ladies and gents, is live a life of purpose, of passion, and also of performance. Our purpose is excitement. It's brilliant. It's golf. It's surfing. It's whatever it is that you love doing. Our passion is day trading. And the way that we achieve our purpose and the reason we are so passionate is because we love performance. And what we want to do out of the mini video series is actually introduce you to our day trading, introduce you to what we do. But ultimately, what do we want for you? We want to empower you to do exactly the same, which is live your dreams. Now, for many of you, living your dreams will have many different meanings. So welcome to the world of IDTA, where we are already living the dream and we want you to do exactly the same thing. Now, 10 minutes with IDTA will give you a very, very quick introduction as to what we do, why we do, how we do, and why we believe it is so successful. We've got core beliefs around trading and investing and explaining why we love what we do. And in fact, we have three core beliefs. Now, a number of these core beliefs are probably going to fly in the face of what you've been taught, what you've read in the tabloids, what you've read in the press. Now, I don't need to go so far as to say everything you read in the press might not be correct. Let's get into these concepts. And the first one we're going to do is BHP. Now, that is not an insult against BHP or Broken Hill Proprietary based in, based in the ASX 200 here in Australia. We're not talking about BHP as a company. We're talking about BHP as a concept. BHP was something that I was taught by my parents many, many moons ago, and that was buy a whole lot of stuff across multiple asset classes, hold on to it, and pray that it goes up. Now that, ladies and gents, is the BHP strategy. And I'm fascinated by the number of people, particularly in Southeast Asia, who are programmed to buy stuff, sit on it, hope it goes up in value, and they call that investment. Well, can I tell you that I believe the GFC has completely redefined the way people think about investing. And a lot of people, particularly in Southeast Asia, are looking for smarter ways to not only be involved in the market, but also generate a large amount of money. That's where the GFC comes in. The GFC has completely rewritten the record book when it comes to a BHP investment strategy. And I find it fascinating that the GFC for most people would be defined as the global financial crisis. Now, you've probably seen that in the newspapers, you've seen it on the news, you've seen it in the tabloids. Well, there's a big hint there, guys and girls. My point is this, the GFC, what it actually means, it's an acronym that we passionately call good for cash flow. GFC does not stand for global financial crisis if you can trade the market in both directions. It should stand for good for cash flow. In saying that, particularly in Southeast Asia, how many of the big banks right now are announcing record profits? I certainly know the four majors in Australia, literally now as I record, are announcing record profits. Now, hang on a second. We're in a global financial crisis and yet the banks are announcing record profits. Do you think the big banks in their wisdom are buying a whole lot of stuff and sitting on it and hoping it goes up? Or are they actually trading the market in both directions, up and down? Now, it brings me to my third, if you will, concept or the reason for this video. If you can trade the market in both directions, surely that means you can benefit from when the market goes up as when the market goes down. Interesting point, most people that we teach to trade don't realize that you can make just as much money when the market falls as when it rises. 
So if there is so much potential in the marketplace, be it currency, be it gold, be it oil, be it share index markets around the world, if there is so much potential to trade the market in both directions, why are most people not trading the market in both directions? May I go so far as to say the only reason the big banks are making huge profits and the only reason other people are not making huge profits is because the banks know how to trade the market in both directions and yet a normal everyday mum or dad trader or investor doesn't simply know how to do it. That, that's basically the difference. Now in saying that, I actually believe the GFC has fundamentally redefined how people think about investing and they think about trading and they think about their involvement in the financial markets. We only need to have a look at pension funds in Southeast Asia, particularly superannuation funds in Australia, to realize that there are many companies that don't know how to trade the market in both directions. If they did, they would be announcing record profits just like the banks. So why is it that the banks are announcing record profits and you may not be, not to be in your face of course, but you may not be announcing record profits. Could it be as simple as a skill set? Could it be as simple as an understanding of how to trade the market when it falls, just like when it rises? And just to plant a seed of excitement, do you realize that the market actually falls typically a lot faster than it rises? So in a falling market, you can actually get to your profit target faster than in a rising market. Now in trading circles, we quite often say trend is your friend. Now a downtrend, can I tell you, very exciting. In trading circles, we also say that a market will catch the lift down and catch the stairs back up, i.e. a market normally falls three to four times faster that when it rises. Now, why would that be? Is that because the market on the way down is fueled by panic? And on the way up, it's fueled by maybe a little bit of greed, maybe a little bit of positive sentiment in the market. The point of running round and round in circles on this, ladies and gents, is why is it that most people in Southeast Asia only know to buy stuff and sit on it and hope it goes up in value? May I go so far as to suggest the only reason people don't know how to trade the market down is because they haven't been taught. Everybody's been taught how to trade the market up. I see a massive problem here, but I also see a huge solution. The problem is most people in my observation and in the observation of the team behind IDTA, most people only know how to make money when the market goes up. And yet the big banks and the big financials are trading the market in both directions and they're having a ball when the market falls. So the problem, ladies and gents, is skill set. The solution is providing you with the teaching and the skill sets in order to trade the market in both directions. Now, as I record, the GFC has been going for three to three and a half years. Just imagine what life would be like for you if you had have traded the GFC in both directions and taken advantage of the falling markets instead of being hammered by the falling markets. Might life look very different? May three to three and a half years worth of record profit make your bank accounts look a little bit different? I don't mean to be in your face, ladies and gents, but 10 minutes with IDTA is exactly that. It's a reality check. It's raising questions. It's presenting a problem and it's also suggesting a phenomenal solution. I believe the solution is we teach you to trade in both directions because the markets move in both directions. So why don't we trade them in both directions and in, in fact redefine the GFC and turn it into something really exciting. What we ultimately want to do, ladies and gents, is make great money. So surely it is smart to replicate the record profits of the big banks and start thinking like they do multiple direction trading. So this is how we're going to do it, ladies and gents. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce you to a free five part day trading for beginners mini series to highlight the five lessons that we believe are most important that you need to consider before starting your career as a day trader. In saying that, they are completely free and there's no opt-in and you can watch them as many times as you would like. Now, all you need to do is simply click on video number one in the mini series to get started. We trust that you will get as passionate 
and as excited about day trading as we are, and can I tell you, that is massively excited. The big point, ladies and gents, and it's a question for you all, why are you not trading the market in both directions when the big banks and financials are and they're all announcing record profits? And a question for you, would you like to be announcing record profits in a GFC? Without any further ado, ladies and gents, the videos are there, they're free, there's no opt-in. Have a look at those five dynamics, market selection, trade selection, risk control, profit maximization, and finally, how do I control my emotions while trading? And I look very, very forward to seeing you in the five part day trading for beginners mini series. From the team, ladies and gents, bye for now.